When you hear stories about New Jack or read about what he got up to online, you never really believe it. But then you see footage of the incidents in question or you hear the man himself recalling events and it becomes more unbelievable that this guy actually got hired for work. Some of the footage out there featuring New Jack is truly disturbing, but New Jack honestly could not care less. With this in mind, there's something fascinating about Jerome Young that's hard to pinpoint. Maybe it's our own desire to learn more about life's rule breakers, maybe it's his lack of empathy, or maybe it's his brazen confidence, I've no idea. But the more we learn about New Jack, the more we learn that no story is ever far-fetched. No matter how unbelievable the tale, no matter what downright evil thing he did in the middle of the ring, and no matter how he conducted himself in what should have been a professional setting, New Jack really was the outlaw of all outlaws. And hey, everyone loves a good scary story. Now, I know that there are going to be viewers here split into two categories. There will be the more traditional fans of wrestling that really do make up the majority of my viewers. These wrestling fans will dismiss anything New Jack does, calling him an unsafe worker and the fact that he is still allowed in wrestling rings to this day is a disgrace. We will also have those who are interested in wild wrestling stories, almost urban myths, that are both intriguing and shocking, kind of like the proverbial train wreck. I understand that viewers here will feel one way or the other about New Jack, and personally, I sit on the fence when it comes to Jerome Young. While I certainly would think twice before hiring him if I owned a wrestling company, I also find his stories and actions so unbelievable that I can't help learning more about him. Let me know your feelings in the comments section as we look into the New Jack vs Vic Grimes feud. So to start things off, let's have a brief look at both men's paths that led to their first controversial encounter at ECW Living Dangerously in 2000. New Jack was born on January 3rd, 1963 in Greensboro, North Carolina. He began his career in the USWA in 1992, naming himself New Jack after getting inspired by the movie New Jack City. New Jack City was a 1991 crime movie starring Wesley Snipes, Ice-T and Chris Rock, and as a quick side note, watch it, it's a good movie. After a year in the USWA, New Jack went to the North Georgia Wrestling Alliance and captured their heavyweight championship. It was also in North Georgia that New Jack met Mustafa and the Gangsters tag team was formed. Jim Cornette brought the Gangsters into Smoky Mountain Wrestling in mid-1994 where the team created a ton of controversy. We will look into the Gangsters in a separate video in the future for sure, but for now, all you need to know is that the Gangsters gimmick caused pickets to form outside of arenas as protesters didn't take kindly to the characters. One year later and the Gangsters were in ECW and they became a hot tag team in the land of extreme. New Jack mainly worked in tag matches right up until 1999, having formed the Gangstinators team with John Kronos when John's Eliminators partner Perry Saturn and New Jack's Gangsters partner Mustafa left the company. By late 99, New Jack would find himself in singles action, mainly feuding with the Baldies faction of which Vic Grimes was a member. By the time the pair squared off, Vic Grimes was not as experienced as New Jack. He started working in 1996, performing for the California-based APW, a promotion that still runs to this very day. He tried out for the WWF in January of 98, working a dark match on Shotgun Saturday Night, but he never received a call back. He continued working for the APW and in 99, Grimes was able to work in Power Pro Wrestling in Memphis, a WWF affiliated company. He got another dark match opportunity in June of 99, again on Shotgun Saturday Night where he worked against Al Snow. He got hired by the WWF and he was a member of Darren Drozdov's new faction. His name here was Key. He only had one match on WWF television though before the WWF encouraged him to work for ECW in order to develop his skills. 
Vic Grimes took this advice and he debuted in ECW in November of 99 as a member of the Baldies faction. Grimes replaced PN News in the faction, teaming up here with Tony DeVito and Spanish Angel. At Living Dangerously 2000, New Jack and the Baldies had a match. At the beginning of the match, New Jack made quick work of DeVito and Angel. Vic Grimes then hit the ring holding a pizza cutter. Grimes used the pizza cutter on New Jack's head before New Jack used a snow shovel to hit Grimes across the back. The fight then made its way into the audience with both men continuing to beat each other up. They made their way to some scaffolding that was set up at the side of one of the walls in the arena. Grimes set New Jack up on a table before placing another table above him and as Grimes began climbing the scaffolding, New Jack quickly recovered and followed him up. This is where things took a very bad turn. New Jack has stated that this spot here was actually Vic's idea. Both men were to bump through the tables but apparently Vic got scared and refused to jump. I believe New Jack's account of events here as you can clearly see Grimes talking quite furiously while he is up there and he does look quite concerned. When he got up there and it was time to take the bump, he decided that New Jack alone should instead go through the tables as Vic himself just couldn't go through with it. What ended up happening though is insane. The incident would become known as the Danbury Fall. Vic and New Jack get in position and it looks like New Jack is going to take the bump, but New Jack pulls Vic with him and what could be a classic case of, if I go down you're coming with me. Both men fall from the scaffold, New Jack's feet instantly go through the table and Vic flips in mid-air with his full body weight smashing down on New Jack's head. In a word, it looked horrific. New Jack said, When it was time to go, he said, Jack, I can't do it. This is on pay-per-view, and he says, Jack, I can't do it, I'm scared, it's too high. And we are having this conversation 20 feet above the floor. I said to him, Vic, on three, one, two, three, and I pulled him, but he pulled back. I pulled him down on top of me, he done a flip, and his back went against my head. I slammed my head on the floor and cracked my skull. I had brain fluid coming out of my nose and ears and I had nerve damage in my right eye. I will never be able to see out of my right eye again in my life. I get headaches, my eyes get bloodshot for no reason, I go for three or four days with no sleep, but hey, that's part of New Jack being New Jack. That night changed me, it took a lot out of me, I've never been the same since that night. It's been reported that New Jack wasn't angry with Vic Grimes until he heard that Vic was gloating about putting New Jack out of commission. New Jack suffered legitimate brain damage due to this bump and New Jack himself has said in numerous interviews that it was his fault that he cracked his head off the floor saying Vic Grimes didn't hurt New Jack, New Jack hurt New Jack. But yeah, New Jack also said that Vic was gloating to the locker room that he took out New Jack and this annoyed him more than actually getting hurt. We don't know for sure if Vic did indeed shoot his mouth off about the bump. We can only go by what's been reported online and it obviously could be very wrong. But I feel it's important to get New Jack's side of the story here as this wouldn't be the last time the two would meet in the ring. Vic Grimes said in interviews that the issues between him and Jack did indeed become a real life shoot and it all stemmed from this bump at Living Dangerously 2000. Grimes never did go into details about his actions in the locker room after the match and the weeks that followed. Again, we will never truly know. What we do know though is that New Jack vs Vic Grimes would once again happen in a complete different company two years later and again it involved an insane bump. The two met again in XPW Freefall in February of 2002. 
Extreme Pro Wrestling was focused on hardcore wrestling, forming in 1999 and taking in a lot of ECW wrestlers after the company folded down the road. New Jack and Vic Grimes happened to be part of the XPW roster and, of course, XPW being XPW, the logical thing to do here was to book both men in a scaffold match. I'm sure many of you have already seen this footage here. It was rampant on the old peer-to-peer -peer file sharing programs and it's become one of those YouTube videos that just doesn't go away. The two end up on top of the scaffold and New Jack uses a taser to shock Grimes. New Jack then throws Grimes off the top of the scaffold and somehow, some way, Grimes misses 12 tables stacked right in the centre of the ring and lands on the ropes. He grazes the tables and he literally hits the top rope with his back first. The velocity of Vic's body hitting the top rope causes him to bounce back into the ring. It's insane. New Jack said, I had a stun gun with 350 volts. We were 40 feet up in the air and I shocked him in the neck about 4 or 5 times. He said to me, I can't feel my legs and I said, don't worry, I got you. We stacked 12 tables up in the ring. He went through one. Now there's a few things here. New Jack would, of course, like us all to believe that this was his ultimate revenge for the brain damage and the loss of eyesight he suffered at living dangerously two years prior. It just makes for the perfect revenge story. In shoot interviews after the incident occurred, New Jack said he was trying to kill Vic Grimes on this night. He was apparently aiming for the ring post. Let's play devil's advocate for a moment. New Jack just throws him over the scaffold without any real sense of direction or force. He just does it. It looks like Vic flips in midair and this is what changes the course of his drop, leading to him missing that rather unmissable pile of tables sitting in the middle of the ring. Of course, both men could have lined the bump up a bit better, as the pair were over to the left hand side here, where dead centre would have been a lot more ideal. In the wrestling world, we all know that the best thing to do in bad circumstances is to turn a negative into a positive, and it would make perfect sense for New Jack to claim that he was indeed trying to kill his opponent here. What else is he going to say? Of course, it's still fucking crazy to see and it's one of the worst bumps in the history of professional wrestling. It's reckless and scary, but New Jack, I think anyway, was being New Jack in the interviews that followed. I don't think he was trying to murder anyone here, but of course, the fact that there is also video footage of him in other matches literally piercing people with sharp metal objects contradicts what I'm saying. What do you think? Hopefully you will see a poll embedded on this video right now. Do you think New Jack was legitimately trying to hurt Grimes here, or do you think Grimes overjumped his target? Let me know and vote in the poll. Either way, Vic got lucky here. He escaped with a dislocated ankle, and it could have been way, way worse. Had the ropes not broken his fall, or had he travelled a few feet further, it could have been one of the most gruesome wrestling bumps ever caught on video. Vic returned to XPW just two months later and continued work, while New Jack had one more match for the company before splitting. The pair wouldn't work against each other again. New Jack said, I can get through shit with guys and make money. I'm through working Vic Grimes. Never, never again. Don't nobody like him. I am done with him. With New Jack, the term what you see is what you get can never hold so much truth. He speaks his mind with no filter, he verbally berates anyone he doesn't like and in the ring we know he will inflict brutal harm on those who he feels have disrespected him. Even if Jack capitalised on the freefall incident and used it to further his character, there's still no doubt that he was one of the most feared hardcore wrestlers in the history of the business. His unpredictability was unsettling and his lack of care made him seem incredibly dangerous.